What is up, team? Welcome back to the Red Storm Rapid Reaction Podcast. I'm Pat Kane. We're here to talk about St. John's first loss of the season. They just got uh, humiliated, curb stumped, outclassed by Iowa State. 71 to 60. Um, I didn't get to tune into the game until it was 15 to 2, thanks to a riveting finish to a Tennessee women's basketball game. I was really interested in that including the handshake line that took an extra 15 seconds to get over with. But once you tuned in, Iowa State had already had firm control of the game, and um, it was easy to see what was taking place. They were controlling the half court. They were forcing tough shots. St. John just turning the ball over. We had 15 first half turnovers, which is too much for a full game, let alone a first half, especially on the road in a hostile environment when possessions are going to really matter. Um, you put yourself in that situation, you're going to be digging yourself out of a hole. And we do not have the offensive firepower in a game and we can't control the pace to dig ourselves out of said hole. So from that point forward, from that 15 to 2 deficit that I saw, we were even with Iowa State, unfortunately. And like I said, we had to be 13 points better and we just couldn't get over that hump. I thought we improved in some areas as the game went on. We finally got Soriano some touches we were looking to get him going more in the second half he only had one attempt in the first half who's ever fault that is it's a problem it's uh, on the coaches to make sure it's a priority it's on the players to make sure they're looking to feed him it's on Soriano to demand the damn basketball but it's one thing you know when your team comes out and you're missing good looks and you have a few things go your uh, the other team's direction or you have a few 50, 50 balls that don't go your way it's another thing when one team looks much more crisp, when they have a lot more purpose on the offensive and defensive end. Um, when you're not getting good looks, it doesn't seem like you're prepared. And in a game like this, we had a, a long layoff, especially those two cupcakes right before this. Huge game on the schedule. We had to have a better game plan offensively. And I'm sitting here not seeing that first eight minutes except for reading the game plan or the play-by-play -play as it goes. Again, fuck you, ESPN. But we weren't getting good looks. We turned it over, over and over again. And it looked like Iowa State was taking us out of our game plan. You don't have to see the first 10 minutes to know that we didn't have much of an offensive strategy going into that game. Except turn up the pace, hopefully create turnovers, and get some easy baskets. And there was a time in that first half when we started inching our way back in the game to make it somewhat competitive where we were able to turn them over. We had a, a few really uh, good defensive stretches, but we had to make up so much ground, and we didn't have the firepower to do it. Uh, let's take a look at the first half uh, box score. Again, guys, thank you for following on, on YouTube. These uh, visuals, rave reviews, rave reviews. Okay. Um, we only had 22 first half points. 15 turnovers the one positive we were eight for 11 from the free throw line take away those eight free throws and man i mean we had 14 points from the field in the first half that's tough that's really tough on the road against a big 12 opponent uh six for 23 from the field that's ugly four turnovers apiece from our two starting guards two guys who we're going to rely on i went into this game saying i was worried about our guards ability to handle the ball uh, iowa state we saw tonight pressures extremely well in the half court they're they're aggressive on the screens they force you into uncomfortable spots and we played into that and we were not crisp we were not ready to uh accept that challenge and eight turnovers in the first half was just a uh you know more foreshadowing what was going to happen in the second half especially for posh uh he really struggled handling the ball tonight but as a team 15 turnovers to four assists you're not going to be in many first half battles two for eight from three that's you know our inability to really close the gap and or have real big runs because we can't string together uh you know more than one or two threes in a five minute stretch, that's going to be tough. We got to find a way to, to, to get that part of a repertoire. Maybe that's pin zone who we'll get to in a little while. Um, but the first half was just, it was ugly. And 11 points isn't insurmountable. We gave ourselves a little bit of a shot going into halftime. But unfortunately, we come out of the half and these first two possessions are all the ammunition um, a fan needs. You know, and I'm not one to, to get on coaches all the time. I think there's a lot of, ways you can play the results. And if you think he's a bad coach, you can point to things. If you think he's a good coach, you can point to things. But in the far, start of the first half, if you are a believer that coaches getting out coach, all you have to do is look at those first two possessions. 
We have a sloppy possession, pass around, ball around the perimeter aimlessly. We're not crisp. We're not making quick decisions. We're not looking to score. We're just pretty much holding the ball in our space before we decide to move to the next guy. Ends up in a long contested three by Jones. Other way down to the court, Iowa State runs their offense for 25 seconds. They make back cuts. They make crisp, crisp cuts. Ends up in an easy layup for their point guard. Next trip down, a couple lazy passes. We settle for a 16-foot jumper from Soriano. Misses it. Iowa State, same thing down the, the court the next time down, ends up in a, a layup for their point guard. 4-0 uh, spurt to, to start the, the second half after making it somewhat of a game. You're down 15 right away. All right? You can't keep putting yourself in these positions that have to climb back. You know, even so far in our wins this year, we had to climb back. So it's, it's, it's not promising to see us have come out and get smacked in the face before we, you know, turn up. You know, it's it's not going to be a recipe for success against teams over and over in the Big East. They can handle the basketball. They can make shots. They can make free throws. They won't foul. Another thing, fouling is going to be a huge issue. You know, that's not surprising to me with the, the way we play. Uh, doesn't make it any easier to swallow. I mean, fouling is a huge part of college basketball. You put teams on the line. You put your team at a disadvantage, uh, slowing the game down, um, getting your best players off the court. Case in point, end of the first half, we're down nine on defense, and Posh fouls the guy 50 feet from the basket right at half court. Puts him at the line for two free throws. They go make both, and we don't score to go into the half. We're down 11. We could have been down nine. And just psychologically, I mean, nine sounds a lot better than 11. Aside from that, just be smarter, okay? Coach him not to yell at you saying, don't foul with your hands right there. And if he didn't call it on Posh, Mathis had his hands at the guy too. And that's just, you know, it comes down to the players. It comes down to the coaches. No one's, you know, getting absolved of any of this. Um, criticism it's on everybody it's on everybody and we're an experienced team we've got expectations we just missed a great opportunity to show up you know it's it's one thing to get beat in a close game it's another thing to not really have a chance throughout the game and again fuck you ESPN for not letting us see the first seven or eight minutes maybe we had great looks and we missed them this is, didn't sound like it didn't sound like from the synopsis we got from the broadcast uh, crew. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Chris Patola was the announcer. Generally, I really like him. I think he's good in his analysis. I think he, you know, really sees the game well. I think he had some harsh, honest truths tonight. Maybe went a little overboard on a few things. Quite possibly did, you know, saying the lack of skill and whatnot. But tonight, you know, what can you argue with? We didn't look good. We didn't look like we had a game plan that was. Uh, if if we had one, it didn't look like it was the right one. If we, if you're going to tell me we didn't have one, that's believable too. Um, but we could never get over the hump. And he, he said, he pointed out some things, you know, some really frustrating turnovers that just seemed to make no sense. Um, some lack of awareness poor shot selection and yada, yada, yada. But, uh, we played them even for the most part in the second half, but we couldn't afford to play the beat. They pretty much kept us at bay. And yeah, I wouldn't even say even cause they, they most, for the most part had it to 10 or 15 points. We got under 10 a couple of times, but it was really never enough to scare them. Um, and a couple other things to be worried about. Soriano, who's been great this year. He had another good night on the boards. He didn't get going offensively. He finished with, I think, seven points. Um, Jones on Iowa State is a backup center in the Big 12, and he played him even. Maybe Soriano had a slight edge. I don't even know. Can't call it. They won by double digits, and he had a good game against Soriano. So if Soriano slightly outplayed him, maybe he did. Uh, I can't say he did. But that's a backup Big 12 center. And he was every bit Soriano was tonight. And we've seen Soriano have some good games against some good bigs, Syracuse and Temple. We've also seen him have some good games against, you know, lightweight competition. So he's got to prove that he can be that plus against serious big time Big East competition. The Big East has a handful of bigs. So no goes a monster. Um, Carbren or Kalkbrenner, monster. Uh, Nunji, monster. Dixon, monster. Monsters everywhere. So we're going to need him to, to be the, the big we've seen in the first eight games. And it's still 12 boards tonight is a good thing to see, but uh, we need more from him offensively. And that goes back to the one shot attempt he got in the first half. We got to make a concerted effort to give him the basketball. Uh, let's take a look at the, the full game box score. It's not any prettier. Um, you see what I got highlighted here, guys. The turnovers. 20 overall, so only five in the second half. If you can say only five, it was too little, too late at that point. Poshner, so eight turnovers, that's got to be career high. Uh, was just getting himself in trouble, dribbling into people. He doesn't have this, the height or the, you know, the live ball skills that Corbello has to get into between spots and, and stay alive and find somebody last minute. He's got to make quick decisions, and he's generally really good at that. Um, tonight, not so much, but he did have 14 points. He did have 
uh, four for five from the free throw line. So he was able to score a little bit. Um, he was his typical self-disrupting stuff defensively in the full court. But, you know, I didn't see that first eight minutes. You know, I don't know how they scored their baskets, who was getting beat and whatnot. Uh, but the three steals, you expect that. We'd like to see a little more than two assists. Again, as a team, you see seven assists total to 20 turnovers. That's God awful. That is, that it's, you know, it's very unlike our teams we've seen under Coach Anderson. We usually share the ball well and do a pretty good job taking care of it, all things considered. Seven assists to 20 turnovers is never a good sign. Um, on the other end, I think Iowa State had a really good assist to turnover ratio. They were mentioning their assists per basket um, throughout that game. And I, I don't know what it ended up as, but I, I guarantee you it's better than. Uh, seven to 20. Uh, the one good thing for the game, 19 for 25 from the free throw line, 76%, 19 uh, makes. That's good. We'll take that on a nightly basis. And then Pinzone had 13 points. I'll give him credit. He looks like he's got some ability to get his shot off. I don't always think they're good looks. I think he's rushing them. I think he's forcing them. Uh, and he made a few of them again tonight. So give him credit because we didn't have many guys out there doing that. And we might need to see more of it. Um, but 13 points, two threes, five for 13 overall. And he's been aggressive. He's been really aggressive. Um, we didn't see Wusu or Stanley tonight. I don't know the story there. Uh, it wasn't mentioned by the broadcasters, at least while the, I was watching after, again, fuck you, ESPN. Um, but I think we could have used those guys. I know the off the line was Wusu. Uh, people are like, well, he stinks anyway. I don't think he stinks at all. I think he's a guy who can help you in a road environment, an experienced guy, a tough physical guy in a game that's slowed down. I think he could have helped us toughness-wise. I think Stanley has been a big a big asset in our game so far this year. He had a, a huge um, second-half stretches in our come-from-behind wins against Temple and Syracuse. He's been tough. He's been physical. He's been a big asset inside. And not having those two physical guys could play a role. It's not an excuse. I'm sure this coaching staff or whatever reason knew why we wouldn't have them. So they got to be prepared. They got to make those adjustments. Uh, I'd like to see what we could have done with those guys. Um, Store and NY didn't score off the bench. NY had a couple of decent moments defensively inside. Um, finished with three rebounds and assists to steal a block. Store had two rebounds, three fouls, 0 for 2 from the field. I like us to see maybe some plays run for him to get some open looks, not be so reliant on, uh, you know, his shots coming in the flow of the offense. Cause I want to see him get comfortable out there and feel like he's being used tonight, you know, didn't get any easy baskets and, you know, you, you hope to see a score and get some clear looks and then everything else in his game hopefully comes together. Uh, Soriano, seven points, 12 rebounds. I think that's his season low for points. Hasn't that as, the one time he hasn't had a double-double before this was, I'm not sure how many points he had, but um, still a little under subpar game for him. Three for four from the free throw line. Jones, five for five from the free throw line. That's a one positive weight you can take away from this game. Seven points, four rebounds. Didn't look like he was engaged 100% from the time I tuned, tuned into the game. Um, we need him to be a constant scoring threat. We need him to be doing things when he's not scoring that are positive, taking care of the basketball, being a defensive, um, you know, versatile guy. You can cover space, you can rebound, you can block shots, create turnovers. Cabello, six points, fouled out. I, as soon as we turned in the game was him getting a double technical. I don't know what happened on the, on the foul, but uh, he does like to, you know, talk to the refs. He does like to, you know, show his emotions out there. He's got to keep those in check. You know, the whole team tonight, we had two double techs and Coach Anderson had a technical foul. Um, hard to give up points on the road. I'm not saying that tech by Coach Anderson wasn't wasn't worth it. It might have very much been, but uh, still, uh, the team kind of took suit after that, I thought. Uh, Mathis, 13 points, pretty solid game from Mathis. Did hit a big three in the first half to cut it to nine points, I think. Matt Montez with his feet set Mathis, of course. Um, four rebounds, two turnovers, no assists, no steals. He wasn't the problem out there tonight. Um, we need more. Overall, from Jones, Soriano especially, we need to take care of the basketball a little bit better. Um, you know, we lost the turnover battle big, 20 to 12. We lost the shooting battle big, 43% to 35% from the field, 39% to 19% from three. Those are numbers that are hard to overcome. And uh, we were even on the boards, 37 to 36. But, uh, you know, too little, too late there. And... Uh, I don't, I don't know if, you know, there was any ask of the game tonight where we could say we, we outplayed them. But we saw what we saw tonight, and you got to get better from it, okay? There's no way to run and hide from it. We lost a really good chance against a good opponent to, you know, solidify ourselves. Now we've got, you know, see this? 
that's our margin of, uh, you know, uh, paper thin margin of error for the rest of the out of conference schedule. And then we're going to have to prove ourselves in the Big East. Uh, that Florida State game is scary as hell because they're a grenade, a live grenade who's so much better than their record. But you lose to them on a neutral court with your one last, you know, opportunity to add a conference game against a power conference team, albeit one who's been awful by the numbers this year. You got nothing to gain. You got everything to lose. You got to take care of Angela, take care of um, business there, beat New Hampshire, get to Big East play and get a good start in Big East play. DePaul, we might, I forget how the schedule works. We have this DePaul game ahead of Big East play. And then, you know, we have a little bit of break. Everyone else seems to wait till long Christmas to play. We got to, we got to make sure that's another grenade game. That's the one game in the Big East aside from Georgetown. You really can't lose home versus DePaul. So two games we really can't lose. And we got to erase this, you know, confidence wise, but learn from everything you can from it. Got to be prepared. We got to get better in the half court. Uh, we got to learn from our mistakes. Can't come out and dig ourselves in these holes. All right, we got enough talent to make it to make noise this year. We got to put it together. All right, that's on the coaches, that's on the players, and I'll still be tuning in the the rest of the way to to make sure you know we're doing our best to make sure that it happens, folks. All right, but thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're a couple away from fifty, folks. Please, please, and uh, keep tuning in to Spotify, Apple Podcast. For Eric Barkley, this is the Pat Kane Red Storm Rap Reaction Podcast. Peace.